Grade 8 math number 15.2F, we're going to talk about how to calculate conditional relative frequency. A real quick review, we talked about in the last video about joint relative frequency and marginal relative frequency. And joint relative frequency is found by dividing a frequency that is not in a total row or a total column. And you divide it by the grand total. So it's any one of these values divided by that one, see? So it would be any orange number divided by this green one, the grand total. And the marginal one, well, they're found along the margins. Like on a piece of paper, the margins on the side of the paper. So marginal relative frequencies are found along the edge, along the side there, see? Or along the bottom. They're the totals divided by that grand total. And when you add up these joint relative frequencies, their sum is equal to these. See, if I added these two, it would equal that, because that's the total column, isn't it? All right, so we can get relative frequencies from a two-way frequency table. And we saw in the last video how to find those joint relative frequencies and the marginal relative frequencies. Well, there's another type called a conditional relative frequency. And it's found by dividing a frequency by its row or column total, not the grand total. Okay, so be any one of these orange ones divided by any of the green ones for that row or column. Okay, you can't divide this one by that one. It's got to be in the correct row or column, see? Any one of these three could be divided by that one, or any of these three could be divided by that one, or these two by that one, or these two by that one, or these two by that one, see? It's got to be in that row or column. And it's part of the data for that particular row or column. So it doesn't involve or include the grand total in the bottom right corner. That's got nothing to do with it, all right? And when we see it written in a book or in our work, it's usually written as, what is the relative frequency of blank given that blank? So the orange one is the numerator here, and the given is the denominator. See that? So we would know that we could answer this by finding the conditional relative frequency, OK? So we can find the conditional relative frequency by dividing or making a fraction of the value of a frequency by its total for that column or row. The frequency becomes the numerator, and the total for its row or column becomes the denominator. And it's the given. That really helps. It's the given. So we've got this two-way frequency table. And in the last video, we used this table showing how many t-shirts Tala sold. She sold red, blue, and green ones. Here's our grand total, the 50. That's how many she sold in all. She sold 30 to females, 20 to males, and she sold 15 red, 25 blue, and 10 green. Okay. Now, the conditional relative frequency of a blue shirt being sold given it was sold to a female, ah, remember, the denominator is the given. So we look at how many were sold to females. So let's look at our two-way frequency table and find out how many were sold to females. 30, that's going to be our denominator. So we know our denominator is 30, and then the first uh, bit of information that we see the blue shirt, that's going to be our numerator. So female blue is 15, total female is 30. So our fraction is going to be 15 over 30, which is 50%. That's half of it, right? It's 15 out of 30 females got a blue shirt. Now, look what happens when we flip it over to the other way. Now we've got females first, and the given is blue shirts, okay? It's flipped from that one. So now we know that the total of blue shirts is going to be our denominator. So we look up here for the total of blue shirts is 25, and we know the 25 is our denominator, OK? And that the females are going to be the numerator. So how many females got a blue shirt? 15. So now we're coming down this way in a column. See, in the other one, we went this way in a row. So because the blue was the given, we use the total 25 and the 15 as the numerator of females. We have 15 over 25. We do our division. We get 0 0.60 or 60%. So remember, the given tells us the row or column total will be the denominator. Okay, And even if it's a two-way relative frequency table, we can still pull the information out of here. Okay, Now, if you're really, really confused and you're like, oh my gosh, what are these two-way frequency tables and two-way relative frequency tables? When a frequency is divided by a grand total, See, like 15 divided by 50 or 5 divided by 50, and we put it into fractions and decimals, then it becomes a relative 
frequency table. See that? If you're really confused, go back to video number 15.2a. There's a link in the description and start watching all the videos from A, B, C, D, E, F because we're in F right now. All right. So even if it's a two-way relative frequency table, we can still pull the information out because the numerator tells us there's 15 blue females and just ignore that grand total out of a total of 25. See? We pull the information out of those numerators and ignore the other information. So what if it was conditional relative frequency of males surveyed given they prefer green? So the given is green. That's going to be our denominator total, okay? So what's the green total? Well, it would be 10. See? 10. That's the green total. So that's going to be our denominator. And males that bought a green one, well, that's 5. So we've got 5 over 10, which is 50%. Now, sometimes you're going to come across having decimals in your fractions. All you have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by 100, and that'll get rid of them. You multiply 0 0.08 and 0 0.20 by 100, and you're going to end up with 8 twentieths. And you'll be able to do 8 divided by 20 and get your percentage. See? be easier to do it that way, okay? So that's how we calculate conditional relative frequency. Just remember that this is the way it might appear in your work, so you can identify it. And remember that it's got nothing to do with the grand total, that it's these values in that particular row or column divided by that column or rows total, okay, for that particular column or rows total, all right? All right, we're going to go on to our very last video for 8th grade math, number 15.2G. And we'll be done with 8th grade math. And we're going to go on to Algebra 1, okay? Which is going to be very easy for you if you watched all these 8th grade videos because you probably know most of the stuff we're going to cover, all right? So we're going to be finding possible association between variables in our last video. And I hope to see you there. Bye.